Hey everyone, welcome back to Popcorn in Bed. <sighs> Band of Brothers, seven and eight tonight. Oh, I, last we left off, they had just gotten rescued. Not according to them, they just got taken out of Baston. I feel like they need to be wrapped up in warm blankets, given some delicious home-cooked meal and sung some lullabies because holy crap, they had a freaking tough assignment there and it was so depressing and morale was low. So I just feel like they need a really good pick-me-up before their next assignment, but obviously that's not gonna happen, but hopefully they can feel a little glimmer of hope, whatever they see next. Thank you so much for your support. If you um, like and subscribe and hit your notifications, that is super helpful. And then if you ever wanna join over on Patreon and see full length reactions and some other fun perks, that would be super fun. Okay, I'm excited, I'm nervous. I am very surprised, but I really am loving the war movie genre. I have really stayed away from it for a long time, just being like, uh, it's too violent, too depressing, I don't wanna watch it. And it is sad and hard to watch, but I, I'm fascinated and inspired. I can't wait to watch the next episodes. So no one is as surprised as me. And I am just happy I'm doing this and to get to see um, stuff out of my comfort zone. So thank you again and let's do this. I've seen death. I've seen my friends, my men being killed. It doesn't take too many days of that and you changed dramatically. You would look, you would see dead people, you know, dead soldier there, here, ours, theirs. I had a lot of trouble in later life uh, because uh, those events would come back and, and you never forget them. <laughs> oh my gosh. Those sweet, sweet men. <sighs> it's true, I feel like from what I've seen, it just happens so fast. Like your friend dies right next to you and you don't have time to properly mourn them or take care of them or feel what you need to. And then when you get home, that, that trauma comes back. And I feel like he, these men probably became desensitized to, like he said, seeing the dead bodies everywhere. And then you get home and think, was that really my life? Everywhere I look, I saw dead men. Like, that's so mind-blowing to think about now. I forgot this episode is called The Breaking Point. That's not a good sign. It's seven. <sighs> e Company was sent to clear the Bois Jack, the woods near the town of Foy. During that 1,000-yard attack through the woods, we encountered sporadic German machine gun fire and had a couple of casualties. Oh, oh, sorry. That scared me. Oh. Hubler's wrong. Hubler had been talking about getting a Luger since Normandy. Standing accuracy on my part, if I do say so myself. What happened, horse? I don't know. Probably still running. I was okay. Oh, you're a good shot, Hope. Just glad you're on our side. Thanks, Lee. Aww. Now, where's Dyke? Where the hell is he? Where the hell does he ever go? Okay, what the hell? <laughs> Who's Dyke? One man, maybe a sniper. What do you see, Shift? Nobody out there. Oh, Jesus, it's who be shot! He shot himself! Medic! What the heck? Who? where are you hit? To my left! Oh, oh gosh. Come on, it's all right. Stop! Where's Eugene when you need him? That was a great shot, right? Really? How are we doing, Doc? Hey, you're gonna be fine. I can't see a thing. We gotta get back to an aid station. Take it easy. Stay there, Hoop. Doc. What just happened? By the time we got him to the aid station, he was already dead. Cut that main artery in the leg. That's that's it. Oh, that's so crappy. Oh. Winters looks very, very, very cold. There were long stretches where we didn't know where Lieutenant Dyke was. Wouldn't have been so bad if he was just one of the guys in the company, but Lieutenant Dyke was supposed to be leading the company. Do I know who Lieutenant Dyke is? He was a bad leader because he made no decisions. 
Are there any questions? Uh, yeah. What's the formation you wanted us to go for? All right, I gotta make a call. Sometimes we got the feeling E Company was an annoyance to him. Hey, Muck. What's the word? Oh, uh, you know. Sitting around freezing her ass off. Come on, Lip. Give him a speech. How could anyone really hope to gain the respect of the toughest, most dedicated sons of bitches in the entire ETO? You guys don't worry about Dyke. All right? I love Lipton. But as company first sergeant, it was my job. Not to protect Dyke, but to protect the integrity of the company. That's exactly what he's doing. He's just another one of those arrogant rich jerks from Yale. Who'd I put in his place? Shams? Shams seen too many war movies. Thinks he has to yell all the time. <laughs> what about Compton? Yeah. He's the only real choice. Buck. Buck's a real combat leader. Not that it matters anyway, because I can't get rid of Dyke. You gotta find somebody. You do something crazy, get yourself knocked out of this thing. I know, I know. You'll kill me. Check on the other guys. Oh, they're not wearing gloves. Crazy Joe McCloskey. What are you saying? He's nuts? Because Crazy Joe McCloskey was fucking nuts, babe. That's why they called him Crazy Joe. He's all wound up like a spring. Hey, 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 he's fine. I'm serious. Sure thing, Buck. Nothing stupid. We got it, right? We got it. All right. This isn't foreshadowing or something, is it? Don't do anything stupid. I swam across the Niagara once. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. I swear, my mom, my sister Ruth, they gave me all kinds of hell. I feel like they're trying to, like, lighten up this episode a little bit. I heard about Hubler. Shame. Is yes, that sir. Dyke? <clears throat> it is. Where are you from, Lipton? Where'd you grow up? Huntington, West Virginia. What kind of work did you do there? My brother and I helped my mom run a boarding house. And your father? He was killed when I was 10, sir. Automobile accident. That's sad. You miss it? Miss what? Huntington. Honestly, sir, I, uh... Try not to think about it that much. Where are you from, sir? He's kind of a strange cat. Captain Nixon, sir. What? Good morning, sir. Sorry to disturb you. This came from division. Oh, where they sleep. All right. I think I got something that'll help you with your leadership problem. Division has decided to pluck one officer from each regiment, send it back to the States on a 30-day furlough. Turns out I've been plucked. That's fantastic, Luke. Good for you. How in the world does your leaving help me? Doesn't. I'm yeah. not going. <laughs> anyway, the point is, this thing's wasted on me. Congratulations, Lieutenant Peacock. All Hell right. of a guy. Thanks, guys. I mean, it really means a lot, you know. Dog, get out of here. Guys. Would you excuse me for a moment, sir? Yeah. Well, I feel pretty peachy about it. If it wasn't for one Boy. thing. We didn't need to be fucking rescued by Patton. I thought he John, was the one that got paralyzed. What are you doing here? I'd really like to head back with the fellas, sir. All right, then go. Thank you, sir. He's so brave. Hey, fellas, look who I found. Hey, Joe Toy, hey, back for more. Are you? All right, Joe. Joe got hit in the arm. New Year's Eve gift from the Luftwaffe. Please. Almost every single one of these guys has been hit at least once. And George Luz here has never been hit. A skinny little guy? He got pink to the neck in Holland. He got shot in his scrawny little butt in Normandy. I remember that. Buck got shot in his rather large butt in Holland. He got a couple pieces of a tank shell burst at Carentan. One chunk in the face, another chunk almost took out his nuts. <laughs> <laughs> They're best friends. Okay, they're Good luck, lady. Boy. Real nice knowing you. The stories about Spears are probably all bullshit anyway. What stories? Spears is the one who is rumored. What stories? Well, supposedly Spears shot one of his own men for being drunk. You're kidding. And there's another one about him giving cigarettes to 20 German POWs before killing him. Christensen. Lieutenant Spears. I got the name right, didn't I? Christensen? What are you men doing out here? We're watching the line, sir. You keep up the good work. While you're at it, you might want to reinforce your cover. They're only going to be here one day. Lieutenant Dyke said that, huh? Carry on. Oh, anyone care for smoke? <laughs> Gotta look at his shit! One of those first battalion fuckers took a dump in my foxhole! While we were in the Bois Jacques, the Germans had been shelling our old position. There were signs of tree bursts everywhere. That got our attention. Uh-oh. How close? Sergeant Lipton's right. We're gonna strengthen our covers, and we're gonna hang in. Right, Lieutenant? 
Fine. You all take care of it. I gotta go talk to Regiment. I don't think I like him. So they're just reinforcing their foxholes, but they know the Germans can reach them. Incoming! Take no, 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 no. No, 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 no. Get in, get in, get in, get in. Frick, frick, frick. One toy. No. Who is that, fuck? Get in a hole. All I could think about was the 4th of July when I was a kid. What I saw that day was the most awesome and terrifying display of firepower I'd ever seen in my life. Oh my gosh. He's the one that just came back. Oh no. Is he, is that, can you live? Stay in your foxhole! I think I get up. Oh my gosh. I need my helmet. You hear that? Is that Joe? Stay down! Stay down! Stay in your foxholes! Help! I think I get up. Oh, toy. I think I get up. Come on, pal. I can't. Get back and stay for me. No. He's in shock. Anyone there? Hang no. on! Oh. Oh. Incoming! Not again. Okay. So lift him again? No, I'm gonna help you! No! 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 What just happened? During the second barrage, I wasn't laughing anymore. Can anyone help them? Is that? Is that Garnier? First Sergeant Lipton, you get things organized here. I'm gonna go for help. Medic! Doc, what can I do? Hold uh, this. Where's? Ah, uh, you gotta smoke. What's the guy I gotta do to get killed around here? Ah! Ah! Uh, is it off? It's Hey, Joe, I told you I beat you back to the States. Are Toy and Garnier gonna live? Buck was a great combat leader. He was wounded in Normandy. He took everything the Krauts could throw at him time and again. Oh, Buck. With Buck off the line, there was no longer any possible alternative to Dyke. They're still looking for Dyke? Looking for Lieutenant Dyke. We were stuck with Dyke. He's over there. And he was off taking a walk. Please tell me he's doing something, like, very productive and secret. For them on these walks. Uh, First Sergeant Lipton, you organize things here. I need to go polish my oak leaf clusters. <clears throat> Great impression of Dyke. You think so? Don't do it anymore. Especially the part about what he said to me. Yeah, I got you. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Not Is that Luz? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Get in a hole. Get in a hole. Get in a hole. Please, 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 no, please. Get off of this line. Holy crap. Is that gonna blow up? What's, what's going on? Get them off of the here. The shell that hit the foxhole Luz and I were in was a dud. Muck and Pinkala were good men. They're dead. Later that day, we were back in our old position overlooking Foy. We were all worried about Malarkey. Captain Winters was wondering if he wanted to go back to battalion and uh, work as his runner for a few days. Oh, well, Malarkey. Look, why don't you at least come back for an hour or so? Say goodbye to Buck. I'm sure it'll mean a lot to him. I saw a soldier try to dig a foxhole with his bare hands. He didn't notice that he'd torn off all his fingernail. Fear is poison in combat. It's destructive and it's contagious. Oh my gosh. Buck was never the same after seeing Toy and Garnier get hit that day. But I knew the terror of those shellings and the unrelenting pressure we've been under since we got to Bastogne could take their toll in other ways. Yeah, they have been in unrelenting pressure for sure. Lipton is just going no, around making sure everyone's us. okay and giving them encouragement without talking down to them. So now they have to actually take Foy. We've been watching Foy all day, sir. Not much activity. 
But on the other hand, I have no confidence in our CO, sir. Lieutenant Dyke is an empty uniform, Captain. He's not there, sir. I gotta tell you, sir, I think he's gonna get a lot of easy company men killed. You know that was hard for Lipton to do, to speak ill of his superior. Is there really nothing he can do? Couldn't very well remove a company CO. Get in there before they can bring their mortars and artillery down on you. Clear? Clear. What's his deal? We're going into Foy. Keep moving! Oh my gosh. Let's go! Let's go! Wait what a is minute, he wait doing? Hold up! Son of a two! Hold up! Understand. What's happening? Why are we stopped? Tell him what's the plan. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. You better get Dyke on that radio to me now. Captain Winters, we cannot stay here. What? Shit! Jesus Christ! This is bad. This is very, very bad. Is chaos. Sir, we are sitting ducks here. Captain Wears! God damn it, you do not go out there! <sighs> Slurs, get yourself over here! Get out there and relieve Dyke and take that attack on in! Come on, what? Let's go, kid! No! Hang on, Virgo! Spears! I'm taking over. All right, I want mortars and grenade launchers on that building till it's gone. When it's gone, I want first to go straight in. Forget going around. Oh. Why are you yes. They are so out in the open. Oh my gosh, this is so freaking stressful. They're just running into a cannon. That fear. He has no fear. At first, the Germans didn't shoot at him. I think they couldn't quite believe what they were seeing. The astounding thing was that after he hooked up with the iCompany, he came back. Oh my gosh. Please don't die. Oh my gosh. Oh, that was... He took over a hundred German prisoners. That smile from Lipton was everything. Are you kidding me? Just when I thought I could breathe again? Second floor, building on the right. No, please don't lift it. Go! Oh. Are you bad for Conti? Beautiful wound, Lip. Shot me right to my ass. He's carrying him on his back. I love Randleman too. We spent our night in Rashamp in a convent. It was the first time we'd spent a night indoors in a month. Oh, makes them appreciate the small little tender mercies. Garnier was badly wounded and Hubler died accidentally. Joe Toy had lost his leg. Our month in Belgium cost us one good officer, Buck Compton, and one bad one, Norman Dyke. You want to know if they're true or not, the stories about me? I bet if you went back 2,000 years, you'd hear a couple of centurions stand around him. Yakking about how Tercius lopped off the heads of some Carthaginian prisoners. Maybe they kept talking about it because they never heard Tercius deny it. Maybe that's because Tercius knew there was some value to the men thinking he was the meanest, toughest son of a bitch in the whole Roman Legion. They're happy to have a good leader again. Well, from what I've heard, they've always had one. Let's Every day kept the left. spirits up, kept the men focused, gave them direction. You don't have any idea who I'm talking about, do you? Hell, it was you for a sergeant. Ever since Winters made battalion, you've been the leader of Easy Company. Winners put in for a battlefield commission and sink approved on your behalf. What does that mean? I'm so bad with the officer ranks. Does Lipton still get to be with Easy Company? And I like Spears now. I like him a lot. Oh my gosh. That episode was a lot. Beyond the wounded and killed every man at the stone suffered. Men unhit by sharp mouth bullets. Sharp bullets are never the last casualties. Easy men bonded so unusually close together. Captain Winters. Well, I take back what I said about them trying to lighten up that episode. Holy, so much happened. Them getting fired on in the woods, in those foxholes, 
and then them trying to take the town of Foy, and so many good men died. Ugh. I feel so sad that Buck is gone, and that he is so mentally scarred, and Garnier's back off the line, and Toy lost his leg, and Muck. But they still have a lot of good men. And that episode with Lipton as the narrator in the forefront, oh my gosh, I just, he did exactly what Spears said. He kept their spirits up, he kept them focused, he distracted them from how they had a horrible leader and he, he did what he needed to do. And he was just a little peacemaker going around everywhere and not needing any credit for it. And he is a good man and Spears, they need Spears. They need Spears badly. And he is, what did he call himself? The meanest, toughest son of a bee. I liked that episode of how they had you know, the narration of Lipton saying that's not even what was outstanding. What was outstanding is that he came back after. And just the little like flashbacks to Winters trying to think of who he could choose. I don't know, I liked those little moments. It was different, but um, sheesh, I just wish Easy Company could get a break. Episode eight is next, The Patrol. So. Looks like they're heading out to somewhere new and I don't know, are we gonna see like Garnier again? And Buck, is he gonna come back or is he permanently gone? <sighs> malarkey, poor Malarkey. Okay, let's see what episode eight brings. We finally saw that one moment from the intro where Buck just sees them and drops his hat. I always wondered when I was going to see that one. You have a feeling you're going to live through the war. I believe I might be able to live through it. So walk carefully. The last patrol. Hagenau. When I was finally able to rejoin Easy Company, they looked nothing like the heroes who had just helped win the war. Now look what I found. Hey guys. I was just wondering what Sergeant happened to Martin? that guy. Right. Report to second, Webster. They'll find a place for you. Next to a cop, Webster. You'll find second. Move. They don't want him? Oh. Jackson, help me up, will you? You come from the hospital? Yeah. Must have liked that hospital. We left Holland four months ago. Well, I wasn't there the whole time. Until you tried to bust out and help us in Bastogne, Web. I don't know how I would have done that. Well, it's funny, because Popeye found a way. So did Allie, right? Back in Holland. And Garnier. And Oh, they're mad at him. Why don't you go talk to Captain Spears? Captain Spears? What happened to Captain Winters? He's running the whole battalion now. The guys I knew were either gone or very different from what I remembered. Now, because I had missed Bastone, I was treated as a replacement and felt like I was starting all over again. Feeling all right? There you go. He's got pneumonia. The couch, goddamn blanket, snug as a bug. I like Les, too. How long have you uh, been sick? Long enough. Oh. Lieutenant Jones looking for Captain Spears. He's on his way, so I know who that is. That's Tom Hanks' son. Since the river is the main line of resistance, we're going to have to cross it to get to them. We'll need a lead scout or translator. I've got the entire battalion on covering fire. When? Tonight, 0100. Yes, sir. Sir, I'd like to volunteer for the patrol. Spears, talk to you in an hour. Yep. Lieutenant Jones? Captain, request permission to go on the patrol. No. You have an experience. Shit! Shut no! Go! Oh, shit, they spotted us! Oh my gosh! This is like in the battlefield? Lieutenant Jones, just assigned the second platoon. Congratulations on the battlefield commission. The what? They're making you an officer, no? You must be thinking of First Sergeant Lipton. So, you want to introduce me to the men? Well, some are sleeping downstairs, the rest are right here. Is this kid out of high school yet? He's out of West Point. West, West Point. Captain Spears is to pick 15 men. Mm -hmm. Lieutenant Jones wants to be one of them. Take it this was already an outpost when you arrived. Mm. What's the report on enemy activity? Scattered 88, snipers during the day. And we dodged some mortars on our way in. Mm. <laughs> mm. 
They haven't made any attempts to cross the river. They have roofs over their heads, sir, just like us. I don't think anybody wants to do anything stupid at this point, right? Just give us the names, Webb. Who? Oh, there are three men here in this room that they think should be on the patrol. Do they want to be on the patrol? Well, if I tell you, we can't let them let you know. Your secret's safe, Webb. Who is it? Efron. Oh, shit. McClung. Ramirez. And you. So it's McClung, Heffron, and Ramirez. I'll tell them. I just need Listen to... Listen up! Know. Got some bad news. So far, Spears wants McClung. We know. Yeah, we've just fucking heard. Webster here told us. These guys have been through it. Bro, let's move! Clear it out! Holy cow! Come on, come on! Uh, uh, <laughs> It's insane. One second they're just talking, oh yeah, we got showers, and the next minute they're exploding. Bill Keane, a Tacoa man, was killed because he was carrying a sack of potatoes from one building into another, in the wrong place at the wrong time. Oh my gosh. That must feel so nice. No. Malarkey. Sergeant Malarkey's really in no condition to be on this patrol. And maybe if you offered, we could go in his place. Don Malarkey had been on the front lines every time Easy Company had seen action since D-Day. The decision, though, was not theirs to make. Three, Did you hear four, what happened on five, D Company's patrol last night? Replacement lieutenant blew his foot off, stepped on a shoe mine. Fresh him from West Point, had to come back empty-handed. Intelligence giving you information on the CP? Third house on the left. They get their orders. About the patrol. I feel that I should go on the patrol, sir. I know I could use the experience. Denied. Anything else? You're not going to leave that patrol, Lieutenant Johns. Permission to speak, sir. He just wants to... It looks like Sergeant Malarkey could use a break, sir. I've discussed it with him, and he said that he did not mind if I took his place on the patrol. Captain Widows. Yes. I'd really like to be on that patrol, sir. Absolutely. Thank you, Captain. He's got a point about Sergeant Malarkey. Yeah, a point. Fine, you can go. There'll be a briefing, CP 1700. Yes, sir. We have to cross the river to get POWs. Mm -hmm. Do you see any other officer here? So that guy comes in, he's automatically an officer. Okay, this is their briefing. What? We call you guys too? Tan Hut. Lieutenant Jones here is the ranking officer, and he'll be along as an observer. Sergeant Martin here will lead the patrol in Sergeant Malarkey's place. We hear these whistles, we open up. So don't blow them until you're back in the boats with your prisoners. You have to move fast and carefully. Oh, gosh. Remember, it's about prisoners. Don't pop the first thing that moves. They're not pumped about this mission. Picture your assault team. McClung, Sisk, Cobb, Garcia, and Webster. This translator, you speak German. Right, Webster? Yeah. Good. That's my team, sir. How come he's mad at Webster? Dan Hut! As you were, carry on. Webster, he tries to get out of everything. Whatever. Why'd he say he tried to get out of it? Four men on each block. Uh, no, I've seen men to go in. Four men on the left. Sir? Point. Four on the right. Sir. Sir. Yes. Liebga and I, we both speak German. You said 15 men, there's 16 of us. Hey, Liebga. You want to sit this one out? Yes, sir. Martin, you want to supervise? Yes, buddy. I'm ready. Those crowds are going to catch some hell. So I hear. I'm not personally going in. I'm supposed to stay in the rear and give them cover. He's so young and... He wants to go, but I can tell he's scared. This is very melancholy music. Is that because it's going to go horribly? Or they're just scared? Oh... Sneak across the river in little boats. So if like one person sees them, they could just blow them up. I can't tell what Webster's deal is. He wants to, wants the guys to like him and respect him again. He's trying to passively aggressively help some of the guys. What the heck? Are they just gonna stay back? Oh my gosh. Uh, 
feel like they're not being quiet enough. Are they going in? Why didn't he listen? Is that the guy that wanted to go on the patrol? Pick up Jackson. We're moving out. Oh, come on. We all go together. Is he trying to wire it to blow up? Oh boy. Oh. So this is the rest of the battalion covering fire. Holy cow. Oh my gosh. Oh, they're just not letting him. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Does he got this? Is that the guy that wanted experience? He's losing it. <sighs> Someone watching those prisoners? What happened? Eugene Jackson was 20 years old. He'd lied about his age when he joined the army at 16. It was his own grenade. He died of his wounds, sir. Well executed. It's not your fault. It was his own grenade? Oh, he threw it in and didn't wait long enough? Yeah, well, they want another patrol tonight. Another one? Are they really gonna make him go again? This guy looks like he doesn't smoke, but is trying to fit in. What you looking at, Webster? That's what I thought, college boy. Cop seems like a pot stirrer. Are you drunk, trooper? Answer the question. Yes, sir, I am drunk, sir. He's just... Drunk? Taking orders. Hey, come. Shut up. It's boring, okay? It's the same roster as last night. Well, mostly. They're making the same guys do it? Y'all did a damn fine job on a tough mission last night. I want to wish you good luck tonight, because I'd be expecting more of the same. Stand up to him. Yes, sir. Say no. You men did an excellent job last night. I'm proud. I just saw Colonel Sink. He's proud, too. In fact, he's so proud, he wants you to do another patrol across the river tonight. We have enemy movement here and here. Which means this is our new house target here. We're not changing the plan any, sir. No. Nope. Plan's the same. I want you all to get a full night's sleep tonight. Which means in the morning, you will report to me that you made it across the river into German lines. We're unable to secure any alive prisoners. Understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Look sharp for tomorrow. I'm moving off the line. So. Winters just told them not to do it. Is that right? <sighs> Winters is a good man. Congratulations, Corbett. Thank you, sir. Look, congratulations. Thanks. Uh, Harry, Harry. Harry, I didn't expect to see you this soon. Okay. The regiment has seemed fit to promote you to first lieutenant. As we pulled out of Hagenau, many of us in Easy Company felt that a corner had been turned and we all might make it home alive. Has it? But it's just giving us false hope. Colonel Sink's a bit unhappy with the appearance of your uniform. He says it's not befitting to your rank. Oh, Cleaves. Congratulations, Major. Is he back in their yes. good graces now? <sighs> so they're moving off the line. They're getting their break, right? So there's two more episodes. I wondered if people back home would ever know what it cost the soldiers to win this war. In America, things were already beginning to look like peacetime. How could anyone ever know of the price paid by soldiers in terror, agony, and bloodshed? Holland, Belgium. Soon they would be entering Germany.
Okay, I'm glad Easy Company's finally off the line, but it doesn't sound like it's quite over yet. Obviously there's two more episodes and the war is not over. I feel like I gain respect for these guys more and more every episode. Winters just has my heart. I love that he didn't send the second patrol and I know he's the type of leader who would never disobey a command without, but after Nick said it was like just because Sink was bragging about it and didn't see a point to it that he fudged that and I love him for it. I love Webster, he's so cute. Um, I'm happy he's back and I just thought they did a really good job of showing how he was looking out for the guys and he could see how beaten down they were and he was fresh legs and did what he could. I just need them to all make it through and be okay. I also just love how close they are and they really are like brothers and he was right at the end he was saying like how will the people in America ever know what these soldiers sacrificed. And it's true, we, we don't, we could, can never know. I'm so tempted to just watch the last two episodes right now, or even just one more, but it is past midnight, so I better not. As always, thank you so much for being here, for subscribing, liking, commenting. I read every single one. I'm sorry if I'm not able to respond. But I'm just learning so much from doing this and I'm having so much fun running this channel. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And with that, good night.